Hey artists, welcome to another video. Today we will be learning how to paint a realistic white tiger fur. Now this combines a couple of different things that are notoriously hard to paint. So white fur can be really tricky to paint on its own because there's actually a lot of color involved with white fur and if you don't involve that color you end up with something that's really lifeless and boring. And a lot of people struggle with painting white fur. Now, the other color of fur that people really struggle with is black fur. So we actually have both inside this tutorial. So I'm gonna be giving you tips and tricks for how you can paint realistic white. The full length masterclass tutorial complete with paint mixing and my voice walking you through every moment can be found inside the Wildlife Painting Academy. You can learn more in the link in the description of this video. So here I'm working with oil paint and I'm starting my painting like I usually do, working on a prime piece of masonite panel that I've kind of given a dilute acrylic wash with, just so it's not so white anymore. Transferred my sketch and now I'm getting started. So here, because we are painting white fur with black stripes, what I'm choosing to do first is to block in those black stripes. And this is gonna give me a really good sort of map to work off of. Um, and, you know, at least this way I have those stripes in there. If I was working with really teeny tiny stripes, I would have painted those in afterwards, but these stripes are pretty substantial. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint these in with a really dark sort of blackish brown. So now that I've got those black stripes in, I'm gonna go ahead and mix up sort of a medium gray tone and I'm gonna fill that into those blank spots. So I also mixed a little bit of a lighter version of that gray and I'm going to add that into the sort of center of the painting. That's where there's going to be more light hitting and I want that sort of base fur to appear a bit brighter, but it's still not going to be bright white quite yet. So now I'm going in and with a smaller filbert brush here, it's a little beat up, I'm kind of brushing in the very first pass of fur texture here, keeping it really rough, but I'm always paying attention to the direction that the fur grows in. So this will be darker than your final image will be right now, but that's okay because that's going to allow us to build up some detail much more easily. So now that I kind of have my base down here, I'm grabbing a dry blending brush and I'm just giving everything a nice light blend. This is gonna kind of take the edge off some of those crazy brush strokes and it's also gonna help us to build a nice sort of soft fur texture for us to work off of.
So I put my painting aside for a few days for it to totally dry and now I'm going in and starting to do the first detail pass. I'm going to start off by kind of reinforcing where those dark stripes are. I'm working with a fairly small brush at this, this point, um, but I'm still able to cover a decent amount of ground. I'm not crazy focused on detail quite yet. We're still building some of this up, but kind of doing our first pass of detail first. Okay, so we have our stripes starting to be built up nicely. Now we gotta go back to that white fur. I'm using the same rough filbert brush that I was using before. It's got some nice texture in there. It makes painting fur that much more easy. So I'm going in with sort of a medium gray and adding that first pass of detail on that white fur. So now we're really starting to build up the structure of the fur here. I'm grabbing more of a light sort of gray, so I've added a lot more titanium white, and I'm using that same brush and using short strokes in the direction that the fur grows in. I'm starting to build up that fur texture and detail. When you're painting fur, you always want to make sure you have your reference photo on hand because there's a couple different factors to fur that are really important to nail in order to make it realistic. And one of those things is the length. Another thing is the direction. And with animals being 3D objects, if you will, sometimes that fur direction and length changes a lot and it can make it look very bizarre if you aren't paying attention to that. So now we're gonna make some magic happen. I'm gonna go and start to glaze this painting. You wanna let it dry completely first, otherwise you're gonna ruin your painting. But I'm going and adding a sort of brownish purple glaze to the lower part of the painting. This is gonna be a little more in shadow and it's gonna give those shadows a bit more depth, a bit more richness, because if you just glaze with black, you're gonna end up with really lifeless shadows. And there's actually a lot of color involved with black and white fur. So now that I'm happy that I've got some color in this black and white fur, I'm gonna go ahead and put in my final details. Here I'm grabbing a tiny little round brush that comes to a really nice fine point, and into that wet glaze, I'm going in and adding those final details. So I'm making nice long flowing strokes here to make sure that we're getting that smooth hair happening, and adding in a couple of rogue hairs here and there just to give an extra boost of realism because we all know that these animals are not brushing their fur and it can look a little crazy at times and that's actually what we want. And we're done. So there's definitely some tips and tricks for painting realistic white fur, especially when there's black stripes on that fur. And one of the big things is adding a dose of color. You'd be surprised how far a little color in those colors of fur goes. Now, like I mentioned before, if you want the full tutorial masterclass for this tutorial, also my huge database of other animal subjects, then you're definitely gonna wanna check out the Wildlife Painting Academy. 
can learn more in the link in the description of this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.